Welcome back to Ruthless Metal. In today's video, we're going to take a look at Twisted Sisters discography and rank their studio albums from the worst stinker to the greatest masterpiece. Twisted Sisters were of course fronted by the charismatic Dee Snyder, and in 1984 they were one of the best-selling artists in the world with their Stay Hungry album that featured the hit singles We're Not Gonna Take It and I Wanna Rock. But now it's time for us to rank some Twisted Sister albums, so let's do this. The worst Twisted Sister record is in my opinion their 2006 album He Twisted Christmas. And it's an album that I could have skipped since it's technically a cover album with a lot of old Christmas songs. And I find it a bit strange that when they finally decided to record something together again, they decided to do a Christmas record. And I seriously doubt that any of their more hardcore fans thought that was a brilliant idea. And I'm not going to talk too much about this record, since there aren't really anything interesting going on here. So, next. In sixth place we have Still Hunger from 2004. And I considered skipping this album as well, since this is a re-recording on their 1984 album Stay Hungry. All 9 tracks from that album is included here, plus 2 lost tracks from that era, and a couple of recordings of previously unreleased songs. Never Say Never is quite cool and there are some decent tracks here and there, but nothing spectacular. This album was recorded for the 20th anniversary of Stay Hungry. And it has almost gone 20 years since this album came out now, which really put things in perspective. I mean, you can grab the album if you find it cheap, but I wouldn't go out and hunt this album down, since it's more or less the same album as Stay Hungry. And I don't think that these re-recordings ever come out sounding better than the originals. So an album like this is more to stroke their own egos, or to cash in again on the same old songs. Next. In fifth place we have Love is for Suckers from 1987, and for a long time it seemed like this was going to be their last recording, and maybe it still can be considered to be their last since Still Hunger was just a re-recorded version of Stay Hunger, and the Twisted Christmas is more of a Christmas album. Love is for Suckers is the band's most commercial sounding album. This is pretty much an 80s pop rock album. And I haven't listened that much to this record over the years, to be honest. With song titles like Hot Love, Love is for Suckers, I'm So Hot for You and the artwork and all, it just screams 80s hair metal of the worst kind. Their previous record Come Out and Play was something of a disappointment, and this album continues down that path. There are however a few tracks here that sounds a bit like a cross between Kiss and Wasp, like Wake Up Sleeping Giant and Tonight. But overall, this is a rather cheesy record. Next. In fourth place we have come out and played that came out in 1985, and this is a rather commercial sounding hard rock album. Stay Hungry from the year before was a commercial success, so the band stood at the peak of their popularity when this album dropped. The singles from this album didn't have the same impact as We're Not Gonna Take It or I Wanna Rock, but Leader of the Pack got some mainstream attention. The catchy chorus is fine, but the rest of the song is just too much pop for me. And the title track Come Out and Play and Kill or Be Kill are fine songs too, but tracks like You Want What We Got and Be Cruel in School are more glam rock than metal. And a lot of the other songs here are kinda generic melodic hard rock. And I wasn't aware of this record when it came out, but my guess is that it must have been somewhat disappointing, especially if you're into their heavier tracks. To summarize Come Out and Play, I'll say that if you're new to the band, start elsewhere, because this is more of a rock album than anything else, so skip this one. Next. In third place was Stay Hungry from 1984, and this album was absolutely huge, by far their best selling album, 
and it contains more or less every big hit song that the band ever created from I Wanna Rock to We're Not Gonna Take It but also songs like The Price and Burn In Hell and it was here that Twisted Sister became a household name within the hard rock genre but I'm also so tired of hearing those two big hit songs from this record simply because you hear them everywhere and all of the time so those two are definitely overplayed but I do think that Burn In Hell is still a cool track. This album overall is a bit more commercial sounding than the first two. And that's the reason why I like the first two even more. They are a bit harder and less anthemic. Nothing wrong with that, but around this time Twisted Sister went in a more radio friendly direction. With bigger choruses and more generic songwriting, if I may say so. But I do think that fans of hard rock and heavy metal should be at least somewhat familiar with this record, since it was one of those albums that defined the Edis. And I think it's an album that you can play at any party without completely ruining the mood of your guests. Next. In second place we have You Can't Stop Rock and Roll from 1983. And this was the band's sophomore album, so I guess that the kids were back after all. The formula here is pretty simple, most of the songs are anthemic and there aren't much complex arrangements or instrumental acrobatics, it's just straight up hard rock. I always compared Twisted Sister to Kiss, I know that Kiss were around in the 80s too but never mind that. What I mean is that both bands had an outlandish image, both bands had some sort of anthemic hard rock sound and they were both good at writing hit songs. And sound-wise they aren't that far away from each other, at least not in the 80s. But I do prefer Twisted Sister over Kiss, because I find the music to be a little harder and heavier, especially early on in Twisted Sister's career. And since this is their second album, it's standing with one foot in the heavy metal genre and the other foot in the hard rock genre. The lyrics here wasn't just about love, I mean there are a few tracks like that here too, but songs like Like a Knife in the Back and Ride to Live, Live to Ride are cool tracks. The catchy tune I Am, I Am Me reminds me a bit of We're Not Gonna Take It from their next album. And they also have a song here called The Power and the Glory, which isn't a Saxon cover or anything. Overall, You Can't Stop Rock and Roll is a fun and catchy album, and quite heavy for being Twisted Sister. Next. The number one Twisted Sister album is in my opinion their 1982 debut album Under the Blade. And if you've never heard their debut album, you might get surprised by how heavy this album is in comparison to some of their mid-80s material. Run For Your Life was quite heavy for 1982. And Destroyer, that one is just dark and pounding. Tear It Loose is kinda wild and the title track here is also cool. But it's not like this is a full on metal assault. No, Twisted Sister always had some of that 70s glam rock in their music. And in a track like Bad Boys of Rock and Roll, it's very prevalent. I mean, would Man of War put a song like that on one of their early albums? I don't think so. Under the Blade is still the band's most metallic album, and their best. Do I consider it to be a masterpiece? Not really, but. If you've only heard songs like We're Not Gonna Take It and I Wanna Rock, then this album might be a pleasant surprise. So let's have a look at my full Twisted Sister rank. For me it's clear that the band's first three albums stands above the rest. Under the Blade, You Can't Stop Rock and Roll and Stay Hungry are classic albums in the heavy metal slash hard rock genre. Come Out and Play and Love is for Suckers had more of an 80s hair metal sound to them. And whatever the band did in the 2000s felt more like a cash grab than anything else. I never saw Twisted Sister perform live, but I have seen Dee Snyder, and he's a great performer and entertainer. So if you get the chance to see him, I hope you're gonna take it. <laughs> and I doubt that we're ever going to see the band return due to them disbanding after the death of their drummer AJ Pirro. And Dee Snyder hasn't been that interested in it either. But now I'm curious to hear about your opinions. Are you like me who dig the early material? Or did their weird glammed up look scare you away? Let me hear your opinions. 
And feel free to rank your discography down below if you're familiar with it. And if you wanna rock, then smash that like button and subscribe so you won't miss out on future videos here on the channel. And if you wanna support my work, then there is always the option to become a Patreon, like the Horsemen of the Apocalypse. Or why not go and grab yourself some merch at the Rufus Metal Store. And you can also find me on Spotify, Facebook and Instagram. And I do have a website now on Blogspot with tons of interviews with legendary thrash metal bands and a few underground bands as well. And you can find all my links listed down below. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye bye.